from a White House official about Senator John McCain that is at a minimum insensitive, quite possibly flat out odious. President Trump himself has a long checkered history when it comes to the Arizona Republican who survived five years as a prisoner of war. The president once questioned whether he was a war hero, saying, quote, I like people who weren't captured. And as we all know, tonight the senator is at home in Arizona battling brain cancer. Let's get the very latest tonight from the White House, CNN's Jeff Zeleny. Jeff, walk us through what happened here. Well, John, it is clear that, uh, you know, the president uh, sets the tone at the top at this White House here. And one of his lower level uh, staffers, her name is Kelly Sadler. She was on a phone call with Republican spokespeople on Capitol Hill earlier today. And they were talking about something Senator McCain had just done. He sent out a statement earlier this week opposing the nomination of the CIA director, Gina Haspel. He said he does not believe that someone who has that history in the program of waterboarding and other kinds of torture should lead the CIA. So the White House was in uh, sort of some defense mode there. So in a conference call with Republican press secretaries and others, this staffer said he's dying anyway. Of course, a comment like that quickly spread across Washington, given the respect that Senator McCain has. Uh, so then it essentially blew up from there. The White House uh, apologized and said we respect his service. But, John, just a few moments ago, we heard from Cindy McCain, Senator McCain's wife, of course, who sent out this message on Twitter. Let's take a look. She's addressing it directly at the White House a staffer there. She said, may I remind you, my husband has a family, seven children and five grandchildren. Uh, simple words there, sparse words, but a tough message indeed. Uh, talking to a few uh, uh, friends and allies of Senator McCain this evening, John, they remind me that he's still creating waves and still working hard, even though he's out in Arizona, because he... Uh, announced his opposition to Gina Haspel. That created a whole stir here, which of course led to this. But in a uh, town of disgusting comments, I think this ranks pretty high up there, John. You, you know, Jeff, you said the White House responded. Was that an apology? John, I wouldn't exactly say it's an apology, but let me read it to you and uh, people can make their own judgment here. It said, we respect Senator McCain's service to our nation and he and his family are in our prayers during this difficult time. But they did not uh, walk it back or say that um, you know, she was misquoted. They said that, you know, she was not intending to be malicious. Talking about someone's brain cancer uh, in this respect sounds fairly malicious to me, John. That's not an apology. Uh, you know, that statement it's was not. definitely not an apology. And I had, did, had not known that the comment was made to Republican press secretaries, which does explain how it got out so quickly. Jeff Indeed. Selney, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Sure. Amazingly enough, that insult from the White House staffer was not the only attack on the Arizona senator today. During an appearance on Fox Business News, a former Fox News military analyst named Thomas McInerney said that Senator McCain opposed the nomination of Gina Haspital to be CIA director because torture worked on him. Listen to this. The fact is, is John McCain, it worked on John. That's why they call him Songbird John. Charming. Joining me now with the details of this remark, CNN's Brian Stelter. Brian, who is this guy who made that statement? Yeah, McInerney was once the number three commander of the Air Force. He served several tours of duty in Vietnam and other Southeast Asian countries. More recently, he's known as a Fox News paid military analyst. He was on the payroll until last year. So today, he was on the air just as a guest. His recent political views do deserve a lot of scrutiny. Uh, he raised doubts about Barack Obama's birthplace, actually just like Trump did. And he endorsed Trump in 2016. If you remember that event where Trump came on stage and renounced birtherism and said he knew Obama was American, McInerney was there. So maybe they both had a change of heart. But birtherism is not the only conspiracy theory that McInerney's promoted. He also promoted this conspiracy theory about McCain, and that's all it is. It is a baseless lie that was first brought up in 2008 during the presidential campaign. Back then, PolitiFact called it a pants on fire lie, saying there's no evidence at all to support the claim that McCain helped the enemy at Vietnam. On the contrary, as most of us know, he's an American hero. Yeah, it's a very important history. I encourage everyone to check out PolitiFact. Also look at McCain's biographers who explained exactly what happened and note that John McCain never gave anything of value to the North Vietnamese. Has Fox commented all about this? Yes, sort of. The anchor Charles Payne says he didn't hear the comment this morning. He didn't hear McInerney say it because a producer was talking in his ear. Now, whether you believe that or not, here's the rest of what Payne said. I, in fact, have very high respect for Senator McCain's lifetime of service and sacrifice to this nation. Those reprehensible comments do not reflect how I feel or how this network feels about Senator McCain. 
system there saying the network does not support the comments. Now, McCain's friends, I think we should be honest about this, they are measuring their time left with their friend in days and weeks, not in months or years. Now, hopefully they're all wrong. Hopefully McCain will be with us here years from now. But he has a book coming out later this month, an HBO documentary coming out later this month. He views this, these documents as his final words, his final messages to the public. So I have some advice from McInerney. He should set his DVR, watch the HBO documentary. Mm -hmm. He has a lot to learn about John McCain. Uh, I will note that the, that, the, that was an apology uh, from the Fox business anchor right there. And he did note the network did not stand behind the comments either. All right, Brian Stelter, thanks very much. I thanks. appreciate it. As we have noted, insults from President Trump lobbed at Senator McCain. Not new to refresh your memory. This is a brief look back. He hit me. Hero. He's not a war He's hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. Five and a half years. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. And except for one senator who came into a room at 3 o'clock in the morning and went like that, we would have had health care too. We would have had health care too. We got a bad vote the evening that we were going to terminate Obamacare. We got a bad vote. You know about that, right? That was not a nice thing. We actually had it beaten except for one vote. You remember that beautiful night. It was, it was defeated, but one vote changed. Joining me now to discuss Paul Begala and Jim Schultz. You know, Paul, politics is politics. Right. But it doesn't matter he's dying anyway when John McCain, as everyone knows, is in Arizona right now at home battling brain cancer. Where's the line between, you know, politics and human decency? Well, there's no decency in a comment like that, obviously. Uh, it, it's one thing to argue over whether Gina Haspel should run the CIA. Reasonable people can differ. Reasonable people, good people, don't say things like that. Now, why did this aide say it? She's just a dust speck. In, a, in American body politic, right? It is, as Zeleny points out, because the president sets the tone. And once norms are shattered, it's very difficult to put them back together. You know, I worked for a president who gave the Medal of Freedom to his opponent from the campaign of 1996, Bob Dole. Why? Because Dole deserved it. They didn't agree about politics, but Dole's an American hero. Uh, we need to find a way to get back to that, but this president makes it very, very difficult. Uh, it, it is, people should know, by the way, can I just quickly, what exactly Senator McCain endured? He, he was shot down over North mm -hmm. Vietnam. Both his legs and his right arm were broke. I'm sorry, his right leg and both his arms were broken he in the crash. He still can't lift his arm completely over He his can't head. comb his own hair to this day. As, when he landed, he was stabbed. Uh, he was beaten. Later, his captors found out his father was the commander of the Pacific Fleet, a very powerful admiral. Mm -hmm. And so they said, you're, you're free to go. Alone among our POWs, John McCain had the key to his own cell. He could leave at any time he wanted, but he wouldn't do it because the code of honors of POWs is first in, first out. So he was tortured for resisting, more than most. And, and so what he endured for our country, he endured unspeakable torture, and he is an American hero. I don't agree with his politics, but that's not the point. To say something like that about a man who's given this much for his country is just beneath contempt. Jim, Kelly, Sandler should not have been saying this, correct? Absolutely not. I John McCain is a, is, a, is a war hero. He's a hero. He, he, the, the sacrifice that he made get, and, and those like him have made give us the freedoms that we enjoy. And we have to respect that. And beyond that, there's a certain decency associated with someone that's dying of cancer, that may be dying of cancer, to their family, to their friends mm -hmm. and the loved ones. You just have to be sensitive. It was certainly an insensitive, inappropriate comment. Um, that she's probably going to regret, and I would hope that she does regret. That being said, you know, it's, I think it's okay to criticize Senator McCain for his views on health care. Mm -hmm. It's okay to criticize Senator McCain for his views on Gina Haspel's candidacy to CIA. We can disagree on that. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's what politics is all about. And it's okay to play hardball politics with that. It's just not okay to be insensitive and to make it personal. Can't the White House say, I'm sorry? Why hasn't the White House come out and Look, said, I'm the, sorry? The White House said that, that, they're, that the family is in their prayers. And I disagree with the fact that this, this is something that rolls downhill from the president himself. This was someone that, that made an off-the-cuff comment in a meeting. This is not something that she was hearkening back to 2015 and saying, okay, it's okay to say these kinds of things. She, I don't, I, I she don't think made President that Trump comment ever, I don't think President Trump has ever apologized for those initial statements. No, he didn't. And, and again, when in the political realm to get into that personal issue for someone who has, who has 
you know, suffered for our country, it's inappropriate. There's no question about that. I, I agree with Paul on that, but I also think it's incredibly insensitive to say the president doesn't respect military service. He surrounds himself with military people in his staff and respects their opinions. He does not respect Senator McCain's sacrifice. He, he lied to the country, said he wasn't a war hero. When, by the way, you know, Corporal Bonespur there in the White House, Mr. Trump, took steps to avoid service. John McCain took steps to serve. So this is, I, I just disagree, this is emblematic of our times. Mm -hmm. This is emblematic of the era of Trump. And the challenge for everybody else, decent people in both parties, is not to sink to his level. Reciprocity is so deep in the human soul, but I really admire the, the, the McCain family, for example, is conducting themselves with such grace. Let, let me, there's some new bit of reporting into CNN. Let me read this to you. A source close to the situation says Kelly Sadler called Megan McCain today to apologize for the crass remark that she made about Senator John McCain. It's unclear what Megan McCain's response was, but we are told Sadler apologized to her. Um, that's a start, Jim. Sadler apologizing to the family is a start. A next step would be apologizing in public. A next step with the White House, with the White House saying that the comment was inappropriate and apologizing. I still don't get why they simply can't say, this was a completely inappropriate comment, we're sorry. She's paid by the taxpayer. As she should apologize to the family. It was an insensitive comment about someone that's dying of cancer and, and someone who served our country well and someone that, you know, if he does in fact die of cancer, will be sorely missed by many. So th there's no question she should apologize. And the White House, I'm sure, will be critical of her remarks. Well, but no, they can't apologize because Mr. Trump won't apologize. That's the problem. If you, if you fire this woman, which any decent White House would, if, if, you, if she publicly apologizes, which she must, it puts the president on the horns of a dilemma because Donald Trump doesn't apologize for these lies and personal insults. He never apologized to Ted Cruz mm -hmm. for somehow implying that his father was connected to the Kennedy assassination. He, in fact, was asked once, I say this as a person of faith, he was asked, w w do you go to God with your sins and ask for forgiveness? And he said, well, I, I don't. I don't live a life that requires that. He could not name a single time, even in the quiet of his own soul, he felt like he did something wrong. That, that's the kind of man we have as our president. Just very quickly, Jim, you really don't think that the president has changed the level of discourse? Whether or not it's successful is a different story, but has he changed the level of discourse? Well, there's been vitriol in politics as the right goes for the right, the left goes for the left. You know, there's been all kinds of vitriol back and forth. I don't put that solely upon the president. That was going on long before President Trump came, came onto the scene. We were heading in that direction. Do you think she should be fired? Do I believe she should be fired? Yeah. I believe she should be reprimanded for her insensitive comments. Someone else can determine whether what that reprimand Not fired, needs though? to be. Someone, that, that, if you're the chief of staff, you have to make that determination. That's his job. Would you to complain make. if she was fired? Would you go on Twitter, Jim, afterwards and say this woman should never have been fired? No, of course not. That's, the, that's a decision that someone needs to by, make. By the way, that's the, a personnel decision that someone the, needs to make. The chief of staff has never apologized for lying about a congresswoman. <laughs> Who, who he said completely false things about. He never apologized. Yeah, this is the era of Trump. His people never apologize because uh, uh, that the president doesn't. Well, let's not, let's not act like the Democrats have the high road in all of this either. No, human There's, beings do. Homo sapiens do. Right. Decent so, human beings do. And these people are right. beneath that. Okay. There's a political discourse in this country on both sides of the aisle that gets where the vitriol is just over the top. And that it's not just Donald Trump. It's, it's not, not just that's false Trump. equivalency, it's Jim. Not just, I just, that's not right. We've I, never I, seen you anything You sit here today like and this. say that the, you know, all the Democrats, are, none of them conduct themselves in any inappropriate fashion as it comes to... I did, I did not it, say that. I said this president is sui generis. He's Absolutely sui generis unfair. and he is beneath any standards of our lifetime. You could never imagine Ronald Reagan saying this. You could never imagine Barack Obama saying this or Bill Clinton or George Bush. We have never seen a president so loathsome in conducting himself in the, in the public discourse, and now his staff is following suit. Jim, would, would you see Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama make the comment that President Trump made about John McCain as a POW? I, I can't speak for what they'd say in private. Certainly, no one's made that comment that was about public. John, John that McCain was public. publicly. That was... and, and, you know, history is history. We, mm -hmm. we know what that is. We know what they've said publicly. To, to determine what they may say or what they may think, you know, I'm, I'm not going right. to we crawl into We're talking about public comments, not the private comments in this case. But, Jim, I do appreciate you being here. Paul, thanks for being here as well. One more bit of reaction. Senator Lindsey Graham, a close friend of John McKay, told Dana Bash of the White House aide's comment, Ms. Sadler, may I remind you that John McCain has a lot of friends in the United States Senate on both sides of the aisle. Nobody is laughing in the Senate. That's from Senator Lindsey Graham.
Coming up, Vice President Mike Pence says it's time to wrap up the Mueller investigation. Not only is it not up to him or the president, there are continued signs that the investigation really is nowhere near over. We're keeping them honest next. And Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen has reportedly drafted a resignation letter but not submitted it after the president blew up at her.